Hello and welcome to this video lecture. I'm Utkarsh and I work as an optimization specialist at Mosaic APS. In this video, I will be discussing distributionally robust optimization. Specifically, I will be covering the ideas and models presented in the research paper titled Data-Driven Distributionally Robust Optimization Using the Wasserstein Metric, Performance Guarantees and Tractable Reformulations, which was authored by Assistant Professor Payman Mohajerin Esfahani from Delft University of Technology and Professor Daniel Kuhn from EPFL. This paper was awarded the Frederick W. Lanchester Prize in 2020 by INFORMS. After I provide a brief introduction to the paper, the authors of this paper who have agreed to join us today will provide key explanations and theoretical insights into their work. Later into the video, I demonstrate how to implement their mean risk portfolio optimization model using Mosaic's parameterized fusion API for Python. Stochastic programming is a popular approach for dealing with uncertainty in optimization. Simply put, it amounts to finding the solution vector that minimizes expected costs. However, while this approach optimizes the expected cost over a given sample, it may show poor results when samples that were not used to calibrate the model are used to test the model. Also, for a fixed solution vector, one must evaluate a multivariate integral to calculate the expected cost. This can be computationally challenging. Distributionally robust optimization is another approach for handling uncertainty. The key idea here is to find a solution vector that minimizes the worst case expected cost. The worst case expected cost is calculated over an ambiguity set, which is a family of probability distributions. The distributionally robust op optimization problem, or the DRO problem, is therefore a minimax problem. You minimize the maximum expected loss. DRO programs show better out-of-sample performance compared to stochastic programs and they might even be tractable when their stochastic counterparts are not. Naturally, a crucial consideration in DRO programs is the choice of the ambiguity set. The set must be inclusive enough that it includes the true underlying probability distribution, but it should be selective enough that it excludes any pathological distributions that might affect the optimum in an adverse way. The ambiguity set of choice for this paper is the Wasserstein ambiguity set, and it will be discussed in more detail later into the video. The state-of-the-art methods available for solving DRO programs over Wasserstein ambiguity sets rely on global optimization techniques, and they can be very computationally challenging and quite unreliable. The pioneering work presented in this paper by the authors is that given certain requirements are met, the authors have shown that it is in fact possible to reduce the DRO problems over Wasserstein sets to finite dimensional convex programs. This is very relevant because now you, instead of global optimization algorithms, you can rely on far more robust and much faster convex optimization algorithms, such as the ones used within Mosaic. It was therefore very natural for us at Mosaic to find great interest in this paper, and we have made a Jupyter notebook that parallels the content in this video. You are therefore encouraged to visit our website and check out the notebook. So it will make it easier for you to follow this video. On the same note, you should also keep the research paper at hand so that you can refer to the equations and sections that might be mentioned later into the video. All the relevant links will be included in the video description. I will now invite Assistant Professor Payman Mohajerin Esfahani onto the virtual stage to give you a brief yet thorough introduction to, their, to the theoretical framework of their paper. I'm Pema Mohajain Esfahani, an assistant professor from the Delft Center for Systems and Control at TU Delft. 
Here, I briefly introduce you to the setting of our paper and our main objectives. Consider a loss function h, x, and psi, which depends on the decision variable x and uncertain parameter psi. Our goal here is to solve a stochastic program that involves minimizing the expected value of the loss function, where the expected uh, value is calculated with respect to p, that is the probability distribution of the uncertain parameter psi, and is supported on the uncertainty set capital psi. In practice, this distribution p may only be indirectly observable through independent training sample psi hat 1 to psi hat n. A data-driven solution for such a problem is a feasible decision x hat n constructed from the training data through some form of approximation of the true probability distribution p. In addition, we also aim to construct a data-driven certificate j hat n that is a safe estimate of the true expected loss, which is also known as the out-of-sample performance. Specifically, we hope to guarantee that the inequality of expected h of x hat n is smaller than j hat n with high probability, and we refer to this probability as the reliability. This re relation can be formally written as what you are seeing here now. Given this setting, our ideal goal is to find a data-driven solution x hat n with the lowest possible out-of-sample performance. This is, however, not possible because the true distribution p is not known and the out-of-sample performance cannot be computed directly. We thus pursue a more modest but achievable goal to find a data-driven solution with a low certificate j hat n and a high reliability 1 minus beta. A natural approach to generate data-driven solutions at x at n is to approximate the distribution p with a discrete empirical probability distribution p hat n, which is a discrete distribution supported uniformly on our available training dataset. This leads to approximating, uh, to approximating the original stochastic program with a sample average approximation problem, or in short, SAA. The SAA problem has been conceived primarily for situation where the distribution p is known and additional samples can be acquired cheaply via random number generation. However, the optimal solutions of the SAA problem tend to display a poor out-of-sample performance in situation where n is small and where the acquisition of additional samples would be costly or impossible. This motivates us to propose an alternative approach that explicitly accounts for our ignorance of the true data generating distribution P. Specifically, we design a so-called ambiguity set P containing all distributions that could have generated the available training samples with high confidence. This ambiguity set enables us to define the data-driven decision X hat n and the certificate J hat n as the optimal value and an optimal solution of a distributionally robust optimization, or sh in short, DRO problem, which is described of the following form. Now, let me also say a few words about the choice of the ambiguity set in this setting. Here, in this study, the ambiguity set is chosen to be a ball with radius epsilon centered at the empirical distribution p hat n, where the distance is measured based on the Wasserstein metric. We show that the optimal value j hat n, as well as any optimal solution x hat n of the DRO problem, offer two interesting properties. Firstly, for a carefully chosen radius epsilon, the DRO data-driven solution and certificate enjoy rigorous finite sample and asymptotic consistency guarantees. Secondly, for several loss functions of practical interest, the DRO problem is computationally tractable and admits an, ad, admits an exact reformulation similar to the sample average approximation counterpart. Now, I will hand the lecture over to my co-author, Daniel Kuhn, to introduce you to the convex re reduction results of this paper. Hello, my name is Daniel Kuhn and I'm a professor of operations research at EPFL, currently working in the home office like everyone else. 
I will introduce the viewers to the main contribution of our paper, namely that the infinite dimensional maximization problem within the aforementioned distributionally robust optimization problem can be reduced to a computationally tractable finite dimensional convex program, given certain requirements are met. For ease of notation, allow me to hide the dependence on the decision vector x and consider only the inner maximization problem. This means that we are examining a generic worst case expectation problem. We focus on loss functions that can be represented as a pointwise maximum of more elementary functions. This requirement is not restrictive unless some other structure is imposed on the loss functions. The tractability results in our paper are based on the following convexity assumption. First, the uncertainty set xi is convex and closed. And second, the negative constituent functions of the loss function are all proper, convex and lower semi-continuous. If these requirements are met, for any non-negative Wasserstein radius, the worst case expectation is equal to the finite convex program shown here. In the first constraint of the st stated program, minus LK star denotes the conjugate of the negative kth component of the loss function. The norm of CIK is the dual norm of CIK, that is the norm dual to the one that was used in the definition of the Wasserstein distance. And sigma xi is the support function of the uncertainty set. Section 4.1 of our paper proves the statement made above. Furthermore, in section 4.2, we explain how to construct the extramal distributions that attain the worst case expectation within the Wasserstein ball. Having introduced you to the key concepts in our paper, I will now skip ahead to the setup for our simulations and results section. Here we study a mean risk portfolio optimization problem. Consider a market uh, of n assets that forbids short selling. Yearly returns of the assets are given by a random vector xi with components xi1 up to xi n. The percentage weights of the total capital invested in each asset are given by a decision vector x with components x1 up to xn, and this x belongs to the probability simplex capital X. Within such a market, our goal is to minimize a weighted sum of the mean and the conditional variate risk of the portfolio loss. This translates to a single-stage stochastic program akin to the one discussed at the beginning of this video. The conditional value at risk at level alpha represents the average of the worst alpha times 100% losses of the portfolio under the distribution P. Using the definition of the CVAR by Rockefeller and Uryasev, we can easily translate the problem stated uh, to one that involves a loss function that is a pointwise maximum of linear component functions. We have constructed a classical stochastic program so far. However, an investor who lacks knowledge of the data generating distribution P might be better off solving a distribution robust program with a Wasserstein ambiguity set. Having access to n historical return uh, realizations, the investor can obtain a portfolio X hat n with a corresponding performance criterion certificate J hat n. If the uncertainty set is a polytope of, of the form capital Xi that contains all scenarios Xi, that satisfy the linear inequalities c times xi smaller or equal to v, we can use the results from section 4 of the paper to obtain a finite convex reduction of our distributionally robust problem. As a closing remark, I will point out that the portfolio becomes equally weighted as the radius epsilon of the Wasserstein ball tends to infinity. This effect is demonstrated in the first result from our simulation section, as shown in the reminder of this video. I'll now hand the video back to Utkarsh for introductions on how to reproduce our results on mean risk portfolio optimization using MOSEX Fusion API. Okay, so let's get to the numerical simulations. For their numerical simulations, the authors considered a market with m equals to 10 assets. Returns on the assets are normally distributed and are governed by two risk factors. Systematic risk, which is identical for each asset, and idiosyncratic risk, which increases for assets with higher indices. The mean and variance of the relevant normal distributions are as shown. Alpha and rho, which are used in the definition of the loss function, are set to 0.02 and 10 respectively. The uncertainty set is taken to be an m-sized vector of real numbers, and that means we may set C and D to zero. Lastly, 
the authors used the one norm to define the Wasserstein metric. Using the last two assumptions stated above, the mean risk portfolio optimization model simplifies as shown. The key change is that we don't need to consider the variable called gamma anymore. This simplifies the problem considerably. Finally, we come to the implementation of the numerical models discussed above. To highlight the potential of parametric fusion, I have made a wrapper class around the fusion model. The skeleton of this wrapper class is as shown. We will cover each method, but first we focus on the method called portfolio underscore model. The first thing we do during the declaration of the model is that we instantiate a model object. This is a fusion model object. Then we define the parameters for our model. The parameter dat corresponds to the end realizations of the uncertainty vector xi. The parameter eps alludes to the Wasserstein radius and the parameters a underscore k and b underscore k are placeholders for values of the components of the loss function. Note that here we are simply using Python lists for a underscore k and b underscore k, but that doesn't need to be the case always. I only did that because in all of the following numerical experiments, the value for these two are the same. But if a user wants to try using a different loss function, they, they should feel free to replace these two Python lists with uh, fusion parameters. Then we declare the variables. Variable x corresponds to the positive asset weights. Variable s corresponds to s underscore i as stated in the program in equation number 14. And l and t are variables that correspond to lambda and tau respectively. Next, we define the objective of the problem. This is pretty straightforward and we just call the relevant method for the model object and declare the objective sense along with the expression of the objective. Lastly, we define the constraints. The constraints are vectorized, so we define the expressions over all indices stated in program 14. This will be done in one method call. Expression even contains the product of the vector b underscore k and the scalar variable tau. The result is then repeated along the second dimension and transposed. This will be explained shortly. The second expression from the first constraint in program 14 is denoted by E2. Here we calculate the returns on each asset based on each sample out of the total n samples and then multiply that and then multiply the result with the elements of the vector a underscore k. The result is a matrix of size n cross 2. Expression even was repeated and transposed in order to bring it to the same shape as this expression. And now we can simply add these two expressions, which is what we do when we define the first con and when we declare the first constraint using the constraint method of method. The second constraint involves an infinity norm, and that can be modeled using two inequalities as shown in the code. The third constraint that restricts the asset weights to a probability simplex is very straightforward to implement. Lastly, I tell Mosek to use the simplex optimizer. Since we're solving a linear program, we can use either the interior point optimizer or the simplex optimizer. By default, Mosek will use the interior point optimizer. But in this particular case, because we will be repeatedly solving the same model over and over again, but with slightly different parameter values, it is better that we use simplex optimizer because we want to exploit the warm start capabilities of the simplex optimizer. As you will see, this will drastically increase, decrease, drastically decrease the solution times. With the model defined, we now look at the init method of our class. 
This method in turn calls the portfolio underscore model method, thereby constructing a model instance and saves the relevant parameters and variables as instant at instance attributes. This is only done for convenience. Lastly, the iter underscore data and iter underscore radius method uh, methods are generator methods that will iterate through given values of the parameters and perform certain operations for all of those values. These operations are defined in derived classes which will be defining the simulate and solve methods. Those methods are left empty in the current class definition. This makes it easy to make derived classes for each numerical experiment in the paper without having to write the whole fusion model again and again. The viewer will find all class definitions and the relevant code in the Jupyter Notebook that was mentioned previously. Here, I will just briefly show you the results of the first simulation that is done over a sample of cardinality n equals to 300. Note that the average solution time is much smaller than the initial solver time. This is due to the warm start capability of the simplex optimizer as discussed before. With that, I will conclude this introductory video. I hope you find you, you found the video and the Jupyter Notebook useful and interesting and that you will consider our parameterized fusion as your next modeling tool um, along with our powerful underlying solver. Here's some additional information and things that you may check out. Thank you for your attention and have a good day.